I want to go over the Buffalo Soldiers. A lot of people try to give out the history of them. One of them is that that was a black army uh, regiment who killed buffaloes to starve off the Indians, so that's where they got their name. Well, they say some sources disagree on how the nickname Buffalo Soldier began. According to the Buffalo Soldier National Museum, the name originated with the Cheyenne Warriors in the winter of 1877, the actual Cheyenne translation being Wild Buffalo. However, writer Walter Hill documented the account of Colonel Benjamin Grayson, who founded the 10th Cavalry Regiment, calling the 1871 campaign, recalling the 1871 campaign against the Comanche. Hill attributed the origin of the name to the Comanche due to Grayson's ap uh, assertion. The Apache used the same term. We called them Buffalo Soldiers because they had curly, kinky hair like bison, a claim supported by other sources. Some sources assert that the name, the nickname was given out of respect for the fierce fighting ability of the 10th Cavalry. Some other sources point to a combination of both legends. Another possible source could be from the Plain, uh, Plains Indian who gave them their names because of the bison coat they wore during the winter. The term Buffalo Soldier became a generic term for all black soldiers. It is now used for the U.S. Army units that trace their direct lineage back to the 9th and 10th Cavalry units whose service earned them an honored, uh, honored place in U.S. history. So we're going to get into the Buffalo Soldiers. And one thing that is basically not talked about with the Buffalo Soldiers is the black Seminole Scout presence that was amongst the Buffalo Soldiers. For one, we know that the, the black Seminoles, or the Seminoles in Florida as they are called, they were the fiercest warriors that the U.S. ever fought against, and they, they said it. So they recruited these people to help them in the Indian Wars and as well as the Civil War. Okay. Black Seminole Scouts, also known as the Seminole Negro, Indian Scouts, or Seminole Scouts, were employed by the United States Army between 1870 and 1914. Despite the name, the unit included both black Seminoles and some native Sem some, uh, as they say, red Seminoles. However, most of the Seminole Scouts were of African descent. They were black, but they were often attached to the Buffalo Soldier Regiment to guide the troops through hostile territory. The majority of their service was in the 1870s in which they played a significant role in ending the Texas Indian War. So they knew who was up in Texas, and we got proof that the Seminoles came to Texas before this was happening, like with John Horace, but we're going to get into it as well. By 1870, the native Seminoles were living on a reservation in the Indian Territory, but originally they came from Florida. Before the United States government banned slavery in December 1865, several hundred black freemen escaped their masters and sought refuge amongst the Seminoles in Florida. Not long after the Seminoles were removed to Indian Territory, the black Seminoles, as they became, went to uh, Cahulia, Cahula, Mexico to escape enslavement. There they were welcomed by the Mexicans and later joined by native Seminoles, Black Creek and Black Cherokee. So all of these native groups of blacks leaving coming to Texas as well as Mexico. In 1870, the United States Army issued a message to the black Seminole chief John Horace, inviting him and his band to come back to the United States and enlist as Indian scouts and help fight against the hostile Native Americans. The black Seminoles, about 200 people, accepted the agreement believing that they would be granted lands in the U.S., food and provision, as well as reimbursement for traveling costs. Though over the years, none of these conditions were met. But it was important for them to try to recruit John Horse because he was such a respected seminal uh, leader. He was a Miko, like a war chief. He served as a translator, and he served during the uh, Second and Third Seminal War. But he opted to basically leave out of Florida. He didn't really, uh, he wasn't really... He, didn't, he was looking for more protecting the people more than protecting the ter territory. But we did a presentation on John, John Hart. She can go back because it, it actually was inspiration for most of my seminal research. So that was John Hart we just got into. But it said, during their service against hostiles, not a single scout. We're talking about the uh, black seminal scouts who will also be considered your Buffalo soldiers. I'm focusing on the Buffalo soldiers and the wing of the Buffalo Soldiers being the Seminole Scouts, because nobody said that the Seminoles was fighting amongst the Buffalo Soldiers. I never heard it before. 
I never even heard about the Seminoles. So I'm just highlighting this indigenous group that was amongst the Buffalo soldiers. During their service against the hostiles, not a single scout out of more than 50 men were killed or seriously injured. Usually the, the uh, scouts fought with the Car cavalry regiment stationed at Fort Clark, but would occur occasionally they launched their own operations. So they were stationed at Fort uh, Clark, and sometime they uh, launched their own operations. During the Red River War, a notable engagement occurred on September 19, 1874, when three black Seminole scouts and two Tunkawa scouts were sent out by McKenzie to search for an enemy. During the journey, the five men were ambushed about, uh, by about 50 uh, koalas. The only option was to try to fight their ride and escape. Details on the engagement are unclear, but the scout Adam Payne was awarded the Medal of Honor for risking his life to save the others. We also have two other brothers that was one of them. One name is Pompey, and the other one escapes me, but all three of them were awarded the Medal of Honor. It said in light, uh, it has been proposed in 1879 at the Cavalry and Light Artillery School at Fort Riley, Kansas, that West Point cadets learned their writing skills from the black non-commissioned officers who were considered the best. The 100-man detachment from the 9th and 10th Cavalry served, as a te served to teach future officers at West Point writing instruction, mount drills, and tactics until 1947. So they was using these Buffalo soldiers' uh, writing skills. The Buffalo soldiers are the Seminole scouts because the Sem this is the thing we got to understand. The Seminoles actually had better military training than the U.S. because they was used to fighting this guerrilla warfare. They was used to this territory over here, and they was winning against the U.S. So their fighting skills and methods would have been superior. They would have had better scouting ability, too, to go out into the, these different territories and bring back intel. Even though people frowned the Buffalo soldiers because they did help spread imperialism, we can talk about all the other people that did it too. Because over here, the Native Ameri over here, the Native Americans really got their heads up by allying with the U.S. against the black Native Americans and enslaving them. So I have no, no love lost for helping return a favor to them, but we should have been doing it on our own terms. I just wanted to give, this, this is kind of like an update on what happened to the Seminoles, really. The Seminoles end up in Florida, Oklahoma. They came to Texas and Mexico. When they came to Texas and Mexico and all of these areas going out to Florida, we got to remember, Texas and Mexico was once considered the same territories, and it was an Olmec homeland. We could prove that the Mosquican speakers are related to the people from Mexico. But this is a free black society presentation. No, the Buffalo soldiers did not get their name for starving off the Native Americans. They got their name because they were fierce warriors and they had kinky hair. And as well, these people was, uh, um, well, the Seminoles was a part of these people and played a major role in leading these people as well. They went to go seek out John Horace. But it's a free black society presentation. Peace.